Hey, thanks for joining the channel again. So this is my NG that you guys have seen me build in the build series, on the live streams, a um, couple shorts, but yeah. So this thing has turned into my best performing NG that I've built so far. Sorry guys, but we're pushing this thing. We're pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. Uh, we have a 48 volt power supply that's going to be going into it. Not in this video. You'll have to tune into the live stream for that. But this video is kind of a comparison, before and after comparison. We're going to run a speed benchy on this. Um, this is one of the first I've done. I've done a couple of test pieces last night uh, to see if I was doing, if I was slicing it correctly. Uh, last night I did a nine minute in 20 second benchy today. You're going to see. Nope. Yeah. So let's dive right into the slicer and see what the settings look like and press print. I have faith in you. All right, so this is my first attempt at a speed benchy. So the reason why I'm doing this is actually to push my Ender 3 NG as far as I can push it. So basically the setup on the NG, and I'll show you on screen now, is I have a Rapido 2 Ultra High Flow. I am running the Big Tree Tech CPAP turbo cooler, the Big Tree Tech Octopus Pro with 5160 steppers for X and Y or A and B, uh, 5160 drivers, and 24 volts right now. Um, I was running carbon fiber rods, but I wasn't really happy with the results I was getting, so I swapped back over to the steel, and I'm still getting pretty good numbers. Um, so we're going to stick with that for now. So basically what this test is going to show is what kind of speed slash quality I can get, or maybe a combination of both on 24 volts before I switch over to 48 volts. I have a 48 volt PSU. It's the Meanwell LRS 248. That's going to be going on this printer, um, actually on the next stream uh, so if by the time you're watching this it's probably already been swapped over um, but yeah I want to see what kind of results we can get before switching over to 48 volts so let's get into the slicer and see if I'm doing it right and then send it to the printer and see what we can get all right so I'm not fully knowledgeable on the best slicing practices. So if you are, if you see anything that I could do to improve uh, my speeds or the time, uh, leave it in the comment for me. Uh, from my understanding, it looks like layer height needs to be 0.25. Line width is 0.5 across the board. And I don't think really the rest of this matters all that much. I did notice that I do get better times with Arachne, Arachne, or however you want to say that, and inner outer walls. On strength, let's go back up here. We have two outer walls, three top and bottom, and I'm running aligned rectangular for the top and bottom surfaces, as well as 10% aligned rectangular for infill. For speed, my first layer is 150. First layer infill is 300. Initial layer travel speed, 100%. I'm going 450 across the board, including for overhangs and bridging. Travel, I have at 600. All acceleration is at 30,000. And jerk is at 15 across the board, except for 20 for travel. Uh, no support, obviously, nothing in multi-material, and the only other thing I'm running is two skirt loops and no brim. 
So for this section right here, that's pretty much all set. And I did see that this 45 degree angle does get me a little bit better timing. I don't know why, um, but it does. I am using LDO ABS for the filament uh, at 0.891 flow, pressure advance is 0.3, although I could shut this off because I'm not really going for quality. I don't know if that's gonna really make a difference. Uh, cooling, actually I want the cooling to start on the fourth layer. Six, I noticed was a little bit too late. Uh, one, mil one second layer time, zero second layer time, keep fan on always. I have this unchecked, minimum print speed 450. Let's just go ahead and save that. And for the printer, I have my Ender NG Blue Fasterist Profile, where I have my motion abilities set at 700, 700, 12, 25, and then 70,000 for acceleration. Yes, this printer can do 70,000. Uh, 25 for jerk, and I turn retraction down to one millimeter, even though this is a Bowden setup. I don't really care about that. Hopefully I don't get a clog. But with those settings, let's go ahead and slice it. And we're at eight minutes and four seconds. Let's see how that actually turns out. So going down, we have our pattern. Looking at our speed. Looks like we're pretty consistent with 400 across the board. Let's see if we actually hit those speeds. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and send it over to the printer. And I will switch cameras over to the actual printer. So the bed scan is complete and we're up to temperature. So this should start any second now. So let's get ready to time this thing. Hopefully everything goes well and there's no catastrophic failure. Now I am gonna start the timer after the skirt is done. All right, so first layer went down great, and let's see what happens. Okay, so that's it. Uh, that is a sub eight minute and 50 second Benji. Uh, that is my fastest Benji so far. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that. A little bit disappointed. The slicer said it would be eight minutes and four seconds. Um, so I'm not sure where the disconnect is, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I think uh, it looks like a boat which means I probably could go a little bit faster, um, but that's probably thanks to the CPAP cooling. Um, but yeah, eight minutes, 49 seconds. The last Benchy I did before this was uh, 920. So to shave off an extra 30 seconds, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's go ahead and we'll revisit this after I go to 48 volt and we'll see uh, what it looks like after that.
but yeah just wanted to do this quick little video um it might not be that quick but shorter than the build series so hey thanks for watching and uh, if you like this hit that subscribe button and come join us on the uh, live stream have a good one